Hey everyone, Binay here from Process Street, and in this video I'm going to show you how we run sales proposals directly from our CRM close IO using Process Street and using HelloSign. And this is basically when we're sending a pricing proposal to a new customer for them to sign up for Process Street. I'm going to run it here on a demo organization just to kind of give you an overview of what it is and how it works. Uh, I'll show you basically how the process works for the end user for a sales rep when they're working to actually send a proposal. And then I'll jump into exactly how I made this process. I'm not going to go into every single detail, every single field. If you do want help setting this up, feel free to reach out to sales or customer success and we'll help you get set up. So what we've done is we've added a integration link here against our contact as close IO calls them. You can add these similar types of links into any system such as Salesforce or Zendesk and it will do essentially the same thing. We have different videos on those ones but basically I've got a link here that's create sales proposal so when a um, rep wants to create the proposal they just click the link. Clicking the link will then open a process in process street which is basically our sales proposal generation and send via hello sign proposal process. Uh, they're basically going to come through and, and complete this. We have to change the company name. It doesn't get filled in automatically like the client name and email. That's a restriction from close, but if you're using Salesforce or Zendesk or whatever, it would work. You've got to put in the rep email. So that's basically the sales rep. So maybe Salesforce would push that through, maybe not. If you were using Salesforce or Zendesk, you'd probably be able to push that through manually as well. Again, that's a restriction from close. Here for the proposal details now, we select the plan. So for example, Business Pro. We select the proposal date that we're sending the proposal and the date that the proposal expires. I'm going to do one week. For here, we put in the user count. So how many users they need. Um, for example, 20 users. And then here we do like per price for one year, if they sign a one year contract, the price for two years, if they sign a two year contract and the price for three years. For us, this is their per user price. So for example, if it's $300 per user per year or $200 per user per year, etc. You know, you can customize this however you want. The way that we actually calculate these per user prices is we have a spreadsheet formula that's done and that pretty much just lets you plug in you know, the number of users, the per user price, and the discount, it will calculate it out and tell the rep what they need to plug in. So they'll put in 135, 122. Oh, actually, this is a business pro. So I'd actually be doing something like this. So I'd say we're doing a 10% discount. And then we figure out the two and three year pricing. You can do all sorts of stuff here. So if you had um, less dynamic pricing, so you know you had a kind of pretty fixed per year price and you just wanted to give a discount, you could, for example, just put a drop down that said 10% discount, 20% discount, 30%, and then they could just select that and it would calculate it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can calculate the price depending on how your business model works. Here for additional benefits, we can put customer success manager, additional terms, none. So this is kind of the information that's going to go into the proposal. This is a step basically for the rep to self check the proposal and make sure that everything is correct. So I've actually pulled in all the information from these previous steps kind of into a self approval step for the rep to just make sure and got a few things. So just double check the client info is correct. Check that make sure your info is correct and make sure the proposal details are correct. Business pro start date users pricing terms, etc. So make sure that's all good. And then that's good. Now they've like filled it out and checked it. They basically have a task here that's complete to send a test proposal. Completing this task will actually send a proposal to me, their sales manager, so I can actually go in and essentially run through the entire proposal in HelloSign and make sure that it looks good. So I can show you what that looks like here. So you can see we've received the test proposal from Tesla Motors. I'm gonna come in here and open it and check it. Um, you know, this is the test for this is everything it's going to say, right? Obviously, except for these test kind of brackets here. But these just kind of help us identify that this is a test proposal and not a real one that is going out. Um, I can come in, I can click on it. I can see, okay, this is the proposal. It's for Tesla Motors. You know, here's my info as the rep that's sending the um, proposal. 
we can come down and then actually the proposal is set up so that it has the three prices automatically calculated here. So it's calculated business pro, minimum users, uh, which are the users we put in, the annual price that we set. Well, it's, it's figured out the original price here. And then it's also gone and set business pro price uh, for one year. And then it's given it for two years and given it for three years. And it, this is a required field that we set in HelloSign. Somebody's forced to basically um, choose one of the options uh, and then they'll go through, they could read the rest of the proposal. So this is actually the test one, right? So I'm going through, I'm testing it myself. We're gonna say, okay, I went through, I checked all that, that looks good. Then I'm gonna come back. I'm automatically assigned the task for manager approval. So when he kind of hits that complete test proposal, two things happen. I get this task in my inbox, it tells me I need to approve this process. I also get the test proposal in my inbox. Obviously you don't have to have this test step um, to send the proposal, it's up to you if, if you want to manage it to approval or, or not. Then we'll go through, check this. So I would run through the test proposal. I would then run through this task and just double, double check all the details are correct. And once this is complete, the rep is basically free to come in and complete this task, which will then send that exact same proposal to the client, obviously removing any of the test brackets and anything else that we did. And that's the sales generation proposal process. And so we complete that. And now the proposal is sent to the customer. So that's the kind of approval creation generation part of the proposal. The other cool thing that happens is here in Slack, the test proposal is sent. It automatically sends me an app message here in our sales proposal channel, you know, saying there's a proposal for approval. And then here you can actually see that I viewed the proposal. When a proposal is viewed, it pops up here, you know, saying the proposal is viewed. And then also when a proposal is signed, it will pop up here saying the proposal is signed. Now, this one is not signed yet because I think there's two parties that need to actually sign this. Let's see. So yeah, here's like me, the rep. So first it was me, the customer signing it. Now it goes to the rep. So what the test proposal does is it actually, uh, whichever rep basically submits the test proposal, first it sends it to me pretending like I'm the test customer, and then I sign it as the customer, and then it goes to the rep who created the proposal for them to sign it, because that's the actual flow of the proposal going out. First the customer signs it, then the rep signs it. And the reason that we do that is it allows me to completely view the kind of finished proposal document, and it also allows the rep to review the complete proposal document before we go and sends it to the customer. So it's kind of just like a double verification process. That's why we do it. And once that is signed, that will pop up here in Slack. So here you can see that the proposal viewed pops up here in Slack when somebody views the proposal. And then also when the proposal is signed, it will pop up here as well, but this is a test. So we're not actually going to see that pop up, but I have that set up too, to basically, it's quite a circle of, of a process, but I have Hello sign, save it into Google Drive, and then Google Drive post the finished link to the signed PDF here in the sales proposal channel so we can see it. So that's kind of the flow there, right? So they start from the CRM, they create the proposal, it goes through an approval flow, and then all the activity of the proposal kind of comes back here into Slack, and that's our entire process going on there. I'll jump into Zapier now and just show you quickly how I set up some of these. So here I am in Zapier, and you can see I have five different zaps running for this kind of entire process. There's also the run link that initiates the process from close, but we cover run links in a lot of other videos. So I'm not going to talk about that um, in this one. But again, if you need help, check out checklist run links or ask your process street rep to help you. So I'll run through the zaps that I have here. The first one that I have is when we actually create the proposal checklist, we just post a note into close that says that we generated the checklist says who the user was and the link back to the checklist. Basically this just says, okay, we started the proposal process. Um, it hasn't necessarily been finished yet, but we started it. That's the first zap. The way that is created is it's quite a simple one. It's basically a new checklist is the trigger finds the leading close uh, from the email address and then it creates a note in close. 
So that's kind of the first one. The second two that I have are pretty much the same. I just change a few things such as the email address and the test brackets. But basically what they do is they create the proposal in HelloSign from checking the task in Process Street. So this is when I check this one, you know, complete to send test proposal. That's firing this zap, new task checked. It then goes on to do a bunch of stuff. So it looks up a spreadsheet Basically, it's like a directory of all the sales reps and, and their close IO user ID. And essentially what this does, it's a spreadsheet that has like the, you know, the reps email, their phone number, and maybe their close URL and some other stuff. And so it basically, just by putting in the email address, I can essentially pull back their phone number and maybe, you know, whatever other information I want that I can populate into the proposal. So that's kind of why we do that. We just get more information about our own reps from an internal database that we keep. Then I go through a bunch of formatting steps here, which I'll run through quickly. First, I'm using formatting to make the proposal date because basically we post the date field with the date and the time. And so I'm stripping out the time. So it's just a pretty date field. So here I'm, I'm formatting the proposal date field into kind of this format. The next is plan price lookup. So I've actually created a lookup table here in Zapier that tells me how much each of our price plans cost. And that's how I know when they select Business Pro to put a default price of 300 and Business's default price of 150. The next I have a calculation to calculate the total amount for the one year contract. I can't look at that anymore, but basically that's going to be, you know, the total of the yearly price times the number of users. Uh, and that's what this math is. I'm here, I'm prettifying the expiration date the same way that I prettified the proposal date. This is actually calculating the total standard one year contract. So it's basically taking the standard price and telling you how much it would cost for 20 users on the standard price. Now here it's actually calculating the one year total price. Here it's calculating the two year total price and the three year total price. So it's kind of taking the one year number of users, multiplying it by the uh, the user count multiplied by the one year price. Here it's doing the user count multiplied by the two year price times two because it's two years and kind of the same thing for the three year one. It's taking the three year price, multiplying it by the user count and then timesing it by three. That's how I'm doing a lot of the math and figuring out a lot of those numbers that appear on the um, proposal. Here is a quick formatted to actually extract the client's first name just because we have we only can post the first and second name through close. Um, so this is just a way, you know, I have the first and second name and I just split them in half and I take the first word, you know, before the space and I use that uh, in the email. It's then sending the proposal to the client in HelloSign. So basically I've created a template in HelloSign and in that template, it has all the fields that I want. So it has the name, the company name, the proposal date, all of that is there in HelloSign. And I can actually, I'll actually pull up the HelloSign contract uh, template here quickly to show you. So here I am in HelloSign and this is my template for the proposal. I'm gonna jump in and show you uh, how we've prepared this really quickly. So basically what I've just done is I've gone down and I've created all these fields, right? Where I want data to be populated in the document. And the way that you create a field that gets sent through Zapier is it has to be a me when sending field um, and then you just label it and then it will pop up in the zap. Once I create this label here, so I do, a, I do a text box basically, I change that to me when sending. If I save this, this now, I label this, you know, this will now pop up in Zapier as a field called test that I can populate as part of my zap. So I've gone through, I've created these different fields, client company name, proposal date, rep name. You know, here's that table that I've kind of, you can see that's all fields here, all the different fields of plan name, min users, et cetera. This is a group of checkboxes that you can uh, enforce to say that they have to only select one box. Here's kind of the additional terms, et cetera. And here are the signature fields. So that's basically how I've constructed the document. And then I've come in and mapped all those different fields that I created into that document. So here you can see this, these are the kind of outputs from the calculations I've done. Here's data from the uh, original checklist. Here's data from the spreadsheet that we looked up to get like the rep's name and their phone number, you know, and more data from the calculations and the checklists and kind of mapping that all in builds out our proposal to be signed and filled in automatically. 
I then go on to actually find and update the opportunity to basically update the opportunity status in our CRM to say that now the proposal is sent. I update the confidence um, automatically and then I send a message to Slack, which is that one that basically says, hey, there is a proposal that needs approval because this is the test one. That's when I check the test. I have a very similar process. I basically just copied that one and then edited it a little bit when you, when you check the final one. And that is this one here. And it's essentially the same process in this one. For example, I have, you know, in the hello sign part, I put in test here. This is a test, right? I put in a few test things like that. I also changed the email address in here to always default to send to Vinay when it's a test. But then in the client one, I obviously have the contract go out to the client and I remove all that test stuff. I also don't have that message that goes to Slack at the end that asks me to approve it just because it's for the test only. So those are the two that actually generate the hello sign contracts. The third or the fourth one is a one that's triggered from hello sign that basically is pretty simple that just says send a a message to Slack whenever the proposal is viewed. They also have a different zap that lets it send it to Slack whenever the proposal is signed. The problem with that is that you need specific permission in HelloSign to be able to view the signed proposal. So the way that I set it up was that I actually have an integration with HelloSign. It's like a basic one that you can connect if you have a HelloSign account that basically saves every signed document from HelloSign into a Google Drive folder. And then I basically created a zap. Once the file gets saved into Google Drive, it then takes that and posts it into Slack and says, hey, the signed document is, uh, you know, the document's been signed. Here's the final PDF in Slack. It also goes and adds that as a note in close and adds a link to the, you know, final PDF and it updates the opportunity as well with a link to the signed proposal. So basically you have that signed proposal there in the opportunity. And that's it. That's our sales proposal generation process. I hope this video was helpful. Again, if you need help with any of the details and setting any of this up, feel free to contact your Process Street rep for more information. And if you're not a Process Street customer already, you can sign up for a completely free for life account and check out our platform at www.process.st. Thanks. Bye.